All right. Uh, now, before we go into Ricky's favorite topic of trades, we're going to go to oh, best, love it. best players from 21 to 30. So those players are Ivica Zubak. We have Denzel Valentine. We have Czech Diallo. We have Malik Beasley. We have DeAndre Bembry, Patrick McCall, uh, Gershon Yabuzli. I'm really messing that one name. Timothy uh-huh. Luawu, and then we got Demetrius Jackson and Damian Jones. So two two gimmies on the, the last two. He made me work <laughs> for the two uh, international ones in there. I, I know the players. I just the, Saying the names is hard. I said J- Jacob po- po- Podal. Podal. Yeah, I said Podal the first time we talked about Jakob Podal. Uh But yeah, let's go in through 21 through 20. Who is your, or 21 through 30, I'm sorry. Who is your favorite prospect from that range that you think will really develop and will really be a steal in this draft? I'm honestly surprised to see Denzel in this bracket. He's fallen so far out, you know, literally like eight picks back from where Chad Ford had him initially. Take him at 14. Bulls, uh, <laughs> fucking take him. Jesus. So you wanted a point guard. I'll take, if Denzel's there, I will take Okay, Denzel. so you want Sabonis, Denzel Valentine, Wade Baldwin, Deontay Murray. You want one Ben Simmons too? Just one of them. We'll just toss Ben Simmons. Yeah, if back. Ben Simmons falls there, I'll fucking take him at 14 yeah, all day, every not? day. Why not? Why uh, not? But no, <laughs> I, I, think, I think there's a lot of concern over his health now they're pointing at, and I don't really buy it. I think he's fine. I think he's going to be fine. He's going to be a great two guard who can, again, that combo guard ability. If he falls into this range, he's going to be a steal. That's what Denzel's going to be. He's a steal. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Whatever team gets him is going to be lucky. Yeah, without a doubt. I, he's not falling out of my top 20. I mean, it, it's it's ridiculous that Denzel Valentine's that low. Because, I mean, just looking at him, even if he's not a starter for you, coming off the bench, a guy like that is just golden. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's tough, a guy who's a leader, a guy who can do basically everything. Yeah. Why, why not? Why not? I mean, if you have really like a, a strong urgency against his knees and your team like the Bulls and you're like, I don't want another guy with knee problems, then okay, whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, looking at Denzel Valentine, his skill set, his abilities, what he's done I mean, in college, there's no way I, I let him pass 20. I mean, well, if I, I mean, even the Pacers, I'm not letting him slip there. And I'm going to bring something up here, kind of pulling in what we talked about earlier in the podcast with mm-hmm. the Celtics. The Celtics could be in some kind of – game plan mode where it's like oh shit maybe we like you mentioned chris with oh well they may want chris because he can play the three well if there is like if they do their due diligence and they find find out hey at 23 denzel could be there then that could ultimately change what they do at three hey let's take a shooting guard because we can take denzel at 23 to be the number three or play the three for us in Boston. Yeah, I mean, and if you take a guy like Jalen Brown a three or Jamal Murray, I mean, mm-hmm. well, if you take Jalen Brown, then he can play the three and you can put Denzel too. I mean, Denzel can play anywhere too. I mean, Denzel can probably cover any position good that's, enough not, size. Yeah. that's not a center. I mean, I mean, looking at Denzel, I mean, so so much versatility there. Literally, and his biggest knocks are the fact that he's a senior coming yeah, out. Yeah, and, and his injury problem. And his injury, yeah. O- outside of that, there's nothing that I'm worried about with him. I mean, it's fantastic what Denzel's doing. I think him falling that low is a steal for for any team, and a team like Charlotte too, a team that's you know in the hunt that was I, in the hunt I kinda, too. I kind of go eh because Charlotte, I look at and go, okay, they're a team that I know they made the playoffs this last year, but are they really a good team? You got I know Kem- they took the Heat to seven, but I just look at what eh. the Hornets have always been and what Charlotte's always been. And the, I go, yeah, but eh. I think I think they're on the up and up. It, it's really about keeping the players that they're able to keep Batum and they're able to keep Marvin Williams, and you have a Gary guy like Kemba Walker, and then you add more depth to that bench with a guy like Denzel Valentine. I mean, I think Charlotte can compete. I'm not saying they're going to win a finals, or they're, but I but think they can be competitive. Yeah, yeah, I think they could be really competitive. I mean, I, I think Denzel falling that low. I mean, and if he goes one more to the Celtics, just just wrap it up. They're going to the Eastern mm-hmm. Conference Finals. I mean. Denzel can Denzel can help that team yeah. that much, but I mean, looking at looking at other guys, I mean, you have guys like Demetrius Jackson, who we obviously mentioned before, and I, we no, think he's a great a player, great fit for that Spurs team. Exactly. I mean, Tony Parker aging, and I, I think I think DJ can step mm-hmm. in. He's a smart player playing under Mike Bray. I mean, this guy knows how to play basketball. This guy is a smart. He's a uh, smart player. He's a leader. I think he would fit great in the Spurs, Spurs culture. Chad well, there, Ford agrees with me. Well, there's two guys. I agree that, with Chad Ford. There's two guys that I've been looking at. I know I named one of them in Czech Diallo because yeah. I I agree with this, and this is uh, I'm going to be in the minority here. But I think when it's all said and done, and we look at the careers of Diallo and Thon Miller, Diallo Thon Maker, will, Maker. Thon Maker will have it's Miller time, baby. I, I don't I don't give a shit because Thon's not going to be as great as everyone's saying. I think Diallo could have the better career compared to Thon when it's all said and done. This is a kid that I would, if I'm in a late pick order, I'm going, hey, maybe we can take a stab on this guy. 
work with him. I mean, he's got the motor that you want. He's scrappy. He can defend. He can get to the basket. He's a guy that I would want in my front court. Another one, and this is a guy that can step in right away and help, is DeAndre Bembry. And this is a guy who came on in the tournament playing a great game. I want to say, oh, fuck, it was the Cincinnati game against St. Joe's that he played pretty well. And he's a guy, pass, defend, get to the basket. What more could you want? See, he's got all the tools. And, you know, with, with the whole uh, Warriors stock around having that small mm-hmm. forward who can kick the ball out, I think it's a it's a smart pick. You've got somebody who's going to get you, you know, maybe – I don't know. I wouldn't go ten, eight, six, but somewhere in that range isn't out of the out of the you know practical. And a guy like Ben Bray, I mean, he's a small forward, and that's what the Clippers need. I mean, Paul Pierce yeah. didn't work out. Jeff Green didn't work out. I'm not too Jeff high. Jeff Green on him. did not work out. He just didn't fit consistently. Yeah, I mean, I'm not he too high. Flashes. I'm not too high on Ben Bray because you know the Clippers do do a lot of shooting, and Ben Bray can't do that at yeah, all. Yeah, he, he's a poor shooter. But I mean, if he can be a facilitator, then maybe. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe it'll be good for, for the Clippers, and maybe he can develop a shot. But he is pretty old. But that's the thing. If, you, if you got you know CP3 and JJ on the outside, mm-hmm. you're gonna get your chance to go down low. True. Another you, thing I do look at with him is one thing that the one opponent basically Buddy Heel didn't show up against was Oregon in the tournament. Biembre, yeah, they lost 69-64, to but that was a number 8 seed taking on the 1. He scored 16 points and got 12 boards that game. Uh, One final player that I do like, I mean, I, it's not really that I like the player. I'm, I'm not too high on Damian Jones. He's not even in my in, in my uh, first round, but I, go, I like I like the fact that the Golden State Warriors are picking a center, because if they pick a center, you know, with Bogut's expiring contract and Bogut, I mean, mm-hmm. not Bogut's expiring contract, Bogut's just terrible contract, and Bogut's injury, that's obviously going to hurt him there. Verizal's uh, probably leaving. Festus is probably leaving just because of money-wise. You draft Damian Jones, he's going to be on a cheap contract, he's going to be able to play the center, he's going to be able to stretch the floor a little bit, not out to the three-point line, but he'll be able to stretch the floor a little bit i feel like damian jones or anyone any center really can really you know just help the warriors have that depth and maintain some depth to their team but one guy i want to mention who's not 21 to 30 who is in the second round i'm guessing for chad ford's mock draft ben mental that's what i was gonna i was just i was looking him up i'm surprised to see him fall out of the first